Okay. Welcome to today's tutorial. Today we are going to look at uh, nitration of bone matter analysis on tentative A, shown to the Y. We are having a speculative question here. Um, the question says A is a solution of 0.1 mole per dn cube HCl. Solution B was prepared by dissolving 6.75 gram of hydrated sodium carbonate in parent sink of water. Put A into the bullet and titrate with 20 or 25 CA cube portions of B using material range as the indicator. Repeat the experiment to obtain consistent readings and calculate the average ton of acid used. From your results and information provided, calculate A. Concentration of B in mole per dn cube. B. Consume a hydro sodium carbonate in gram per dn cube. C. Consume of B in gram per dn cube. D. Relative molecular mass of sodium carbonate hydrated. Then E. Percentage of water in the salt. Then F. Value of S. And then G. Will not seal to that during the reaction. Before you start your experiment, you must have your table. Before the table, there are some certain things that's right. Prepared volume, which is your BB, 25.00 CA cube. That's why indicated 20 or 25. But 25 is the standard. The material range is the indicator. The color change before the experiment is yellow. At the end of the day, you have orange color. You draw your table, red reading, making sure you indicate your unit, CA cube. Rough, first, second, third, final reading. Nature and draw acid use. So we're going to start the experiment now. The burette, you have it mounted here already. Then the acid, you use the beaker, Labet A, to collect that's already been prepared to collect your acid. The beaker, Labet A. Then with the funnel, you now pour the acid into the burette. Making sure you take it little by little so that you don't have spillover. As you pour, you check whether the tap is leaking. You know if you continue pouring. So as you can see, the level of acid in the bullet is above zero. It's above zero. So all you have to do is to adjust the acid level to zero. Okay, we are, we are there. How do you know that you are zero? This is the stem of the bullet. This is the stem of the bullet. Then we are in zero. The acid has a concave meniscus, so call it. They did the shape of the small liquid of the acid on the in the bullet. So when you adjust, when you adjust, make sure that the bottom of the meniscus or the surface sits on the zero mark. The bottom of the meniscus sits on the zero. That way you know you have exactly the value starting from zero. You should not go below zero or be in between. So this is what we we'll have, the situation we we'll have here. Then, this is where you want to start the experiment. You write 0, 0.00 on this point. Then, having done that, you can now get your base using your pipette. You prepare to invite the the base to the clinical class. You don't repeat it here. Then, you add two drops of indicator. into the base or the carbonate. You shake it, you have a yellow color. Aguavia. The color change is yellow to orange. Bring it under the bullet and titrate. As you titrate, you swear the flowers. Little by little. While you wipe paper under, you can have what's called white tie. The essence of the white paper is to ensure sharp color change. 
So you now have the titrate. We have a color change. It's glittering orange color. And the value we have here is 24.00 CNQ. If I draw it here, this will have the way it is. The many schools is sitting on the 24 mark. Leave on the bottom of many schools, 24. Now right here, 24.00. How do you get the value of the subtract? You have 24 points. So this is the initial for the final, the subtract, not add. Then after that, you now, you now top the RC, whatever has decreased. You top it. Add more RC. Increase the volume. Okay. This is zero, above zero. You can decide to start from zero again if you wish. Because I have to start with any whole number. One, two, three. So let me adjust the level of acid again. Okay, it's at one whole number. So here I want to start from 1.00. Choose any convenient, uh, convenient level. One, two, three, four, five. But most likely not more than 15 CNG. When you start from one, then you can take estimate. The color change as to the four. Let's assume that we have to the four here as the next uh, uh, end point. What will the final read here? 25. You get the final by adding these two together. You have 25. But it does not mean that it was change at 25. That's why I circle this. So since we expect it, it moved from 1, we expect to change that to 5. You now take an estimate. Just try to subtract, um, let's say, one whole number of 0 0.7 from 25. From 25. What do you have? 24.3. This is just your estimate. Subtract this value from it. So all you have to do now, in the second experiment, run it. Allow the bread to move, to run down until you reach 24.3. So when you reach 4.3 now, you now take it drop by drop. It's not that you're nearing the next end point. But mind you, this final value may not be correct. This is just estimates. You don't need to write this thing on your question paper or your answer script, sorry. It's just an estimate you can just write on your rough to know that you expect the next color change to be on 25. So we get another base. Add two drops of indicator. Go back and titrate. Since I'm expecting 25, can move it down to 24 or 24.3 without waste of time. I'll reach 24 now. I'll shake it and come back and then take it drop by drop. You can see it going down drop by drop. Okay. You see? Orange color. Why the first color? First one. You see, compared the two of them are the same kind of color. Orange. So, to 4.6 here now. So, probably are. I estimate it now. So why is this first one lower than this? But when you do the first experiment, it's likely that you don't have an idea of the end point, where the color will change. So the probability that you overshoot the acid is there, that you may cross the end point. So this is a more accurate value than this. So if this is accurate now, if I write here as the okay, let's feed the acid first, let's go back to the board. Let's add more acid. Okay. 
Okay. Mind you, before you reduce, before you level the acid, you have to do the funnel. There's no reason for that. Because this funnel is here, it'll be adding what? Draws of acid into this additional drop to enter. So that is should be, the funnel should be removed. And then you lower. You can take it from one, zero, from one, from two, or from any convenient point. Okay, let me go down to three. So three is your initial rate now. So if this is correct, when do you expect the next end point? That was 29.6. Adding this together. Okay, 26.6. Alright. Okay. We now take a fresh base. We prepare the base. You don't have to prepare it in your school. You can make use of a measuring cylinder. Don't drain the base though. So reduce, reduce it until it comes to, just shoot your hand a little. Until the bottom of the medical school sits on the ring. So you can see it is sitting on the ring, the bottom of the cup. There's a ring here. So this is 25 cn cube. When you transfer the base into the conical flask, you will have additional drops remaining at the tip of the pipette. This is called pipette. Additional drop. Don't blow it, please. Just drop it there and take it out. Don't blow this additional drop. Because that additional drop may be an extra drop of the base. So it's meant to deliver exactly the 5 CNG. So having done that, the indicator Why do we add two drops of indicator? I want to hear your voices. Why do we add two drops? Why don't you pour 10 drops of indicator into it? No? Uh, to avoid altering the pH of the mixture because indicators are solutions of weak acids and bases. So if you add plenty of it, it will affect the end point. So we we'll now move to 26. In that, we are at 26, we now take it drop by drop. Each drop is about 1 cm. 0 0.1 cm, sorry. So you have it here. This is accurate orange color. 26 point, two are the colors. None, they are all the same kind of color. 26.60. We are correct now. Now, do we need to do the third one? No. Are you following it? You know a model, if the two of them are consistent, correct, don't have to do the what? Third one. So a student can just draw rough one and two in the exam. You don't have to do the third one. Where the rack? The third one. So we now have to take our VA. Take our VA, we now say first plus second over two. No longer over three because we did not do the third one. We now have 23.60 plus what? 0 0.60 CN cube over what? 2. Are you following? Your VA now becomes what value? 23.60 CN cube. Make sure the whole reading on the table is consistent. Consistent written to two, two decimal places. Make sure the unit of measurement is indicated on the table. Make sure that your VA is with I mean your VA must also be to the two different places. Make sure you don't use pencil in recording your reading. You only use ink, blue or black ink. So this is your average title based on the instruction. Then, having done that, 23.60. Then before I go ahead to go to the calculations, somebody asks, what if we have this kind of reading? Can I wipe the board? Okay, what if you have this reading 
then 23.50. You have this reading because we are all humans. And so is the kind of make one mistakes and get different one, different reasons. Are they all the same? Are, you, are the tractor values the same? No. We don't need the rock in finding a VA, you know that one already. So you have this reading, they are different from each other. Does it mean that the experiment is, is, the experiment is wrong? No. no, it's not wrong. Are you going to use the three values to do your average? Yes. No. There is a condition or a clause for on this. What to do with this? We the value the least value among them. 23.5. You take the least value, 23.50 plus or minus 0 0.20. That 0 0.2 is the limit of accuracy. Are you following it now? 23 point, the least among them, ignore the rough, for the rough is not used. The least among the other values plus or minus 0 0.2. That you get your boundary. 23.5 minus this, what do you have? 23.3. Are you following? 23.5 plus 0.2, what do you have? 23.7. You go to your table. The readings you're going to choose, the title values must be within this range. You now I say VA equal to. Is this one, 23.6, within this range? Is more than 23.1. what? But less than what? You take it. 23.6. Second one, 23.80. Is it within this range? No. It higher than, than this, so ignore it. This one here, is it within the range? Yes. yes. It less than more than this and what? Less than this. So you add these two and divide by what? Two. Are you seeing it now? But probably assuming that all of them are within the range of this uh, boundary, you now use the trouble and divide by what? By three. three. Do you understand the point? But the best is when they are the same or true. Do you understand it? But this human error, experimental error, experimental error, you can have different values. But whereby they don't agree, none of them, only one value fall within this range. That means you have, you have a wrong experiment. Because you, can, you cannot find an average using only one, only one value. You must have at least two that will agree within this range. So this is a standard of checking your error or checking the limit of your error. So, having done that, we now go to the questions. The first question says, A, find the what? Control of what? Conk of B in more per D and Q. We're looking for C, B. In more per D and Q. If you look up, we are giving C, A. Look at it. By C more per D, that means construction of that C. We're giving C A as 0 0.10 more per DNQ. Good. Then we look for V A. What's the V A for the table now? That we just did. 23.60. Average tighter. Then our V B. Our V B is the volume of the base, pipettes, which we read before as what? 25 CNQ. Are you following? Then the mole ratio, ratio of acid to base. You get this mole ratio for the balance equation. Look at the equation over there. This is the acid. How many moles of acid? Two. How many moles of the base? One. one. Two is to one. Do you understand it now? That, that we write it. But if you should, should you separate them, you want to write them different Na and Mb differently. That means you must now write two moles. Units will be there. One mole. But if you want to separate them in form of you want to put them in form of ratio, then remove the units. But if you separate them, you must put the units. If not, you not score here. Now, since you have C A, looking for C B, you now apply the general formula for titration C A B A C B B B equal to N A over N B. You go ahead and make C B the subject of the formula. CB becomes equal to CA, BA, MB, all over BB, NA. So you make your substitution accurately. Your CA is 0 0.10. Your VA is 23.6 up there. Your MB is 1 more. Your VB is 25. Your NA is 2. When you solve this, we're going to get what answer? 0 
472 You give your answer to three significant figures. One, two, three. If not, you must come. 0 0.0472. And then the unit must the correct name of the year. You may lose one mark here on two reasons. When one, if the value is not to 3 SF, and even if it's to 3 SF and there's no unit at the wrong unit, you still lose this mark. So the two of them will go hand in hand. 3 SF and then correct unit. So this is the base concentration in more PDQ. That is this. You can even see that in the equation, the unit of the question is of the answer is even mentioned to you. More PDQ. Then having done that, we we'll go to number B. The B question says we should find the concentration of anhydrous sodium carbonate. Anhydrous means what? Without water of crystallization in gram per dn cube. You find the relative molecular mass of sodium carbonate. When you calculate it, you're going to get 106. That is 106. Relative molecular mass. If it's smaller mass, then you put a unit of gram per mole. Then you should know that concentration in gram per dn cube, which is normally known as rho b, begin by concentration in mole per dn cube times molecular mass. So the concentration in mole per dn cube is already obtained here 0 0.0472 times 106. Final answer, please. About five. 5.00 to 3 SF. You know, I say gram per dn cube, not gram, gram per dn cube. Look at the unit of what you are asked to calculate. The control of the part. Gram per dn cube. That's the mass concentration of the anhydrous salt. Salt without water of crystallization. Then, number C part says we should find the what? The what? Constitution of, of B. B in gram per dn cube. Of B, look at the different questions. The questions are alike. One is a hydros. What is B representing? B is the what? The hydrated. Why did I write it? B is the hydrated salt. The con or hydrated salt. You will not use this formula to solve it. No, because you cannot find the molecular mass of the hydrated salt since you don't know what? what S. Are you following? You don't know the value of S. So you can't solve by this method because you cannot get the molecular mass because you don't know S yet. So how to find the equation of the, of the hydrated salt? You look at the question, you have, there's a clue here. They say there's, what mass of the salt do you have? Five. In what volume? Very simple. You know I say? 5 cn cube of solution contains 6.75 grams of the salt. Therefore, 1,000 cn cube of solution because the concentration in gram means the mass in one dn cube. The concentration in gram per dn cube means the mass of the substance dissolved in one dn cube. And one dn cube is equivalent to 1000 cn cube. And that become 1000 times 6.75 by what? 500. Are you following it now? Look at the two concentrations, they are different from each other. So you don't get confused in the example. When I have 13.5 gram per dn cube. To 3 SF already. So look at this question. They look al they look alike. They be very careful in questions. Then going to this one, number D says we should find the relative molecular mass of hydrated sodium carbonate. Relative molecular mass of that substance. How do we go about it? We now say uh, molecular mass again by Concentration of hydrated salt in gram per dn cube all over molar concentration of the base. You should know that both the hydrous sodium carbonate and the hydrated, the one with water, they have the same value of a molar concentration. So you now have ROMM equal to this one, we got it as 13.5. Why this one? What does what? 0.0472. What the final answer, please? 
two eighty six point zero something. So this is three FF already. Two eighty six. Now the molecular mass. Let's say you add for the molar mass. That's how we If it's molar mass, you're calculating. You then put a unit on this. That's a two eighty six gram per mole. But molecular mass has no unit. Molar mass is then valuable has a unit of gram per mole. Then having done that, we are now asked to find what percentage of uh, water of crystallization in this salt. Percentage of water in this salt. First of all, we're going to find the mass of water. To find the mass of water, we use mass concentration of water become equal to mass concentration of hydrated salt minus mass concentration of a hydrous salt. I get the mass of water. So mass concentrated salt, so we got it at 13.5. Mass count of the hydrous salt, so we got it as what? Five. Subtract, so, what's the answer? 8.50 to 3 gram per dn cube. This is the mass of the water inside the salt. Now, to find the percentage of water, we now say percentage of water will now become mass con of water all over mass con of hydrated salt multiply by 100 over 1. So mass con of the hydrous salt of water is what we got here, 8.50. Mass con of the salt of the hydrated salt is 13.5 multiply by 100. Final answer, please. Six, six, no? On the dot? Or two points? Nine six. Okay, this is 3.0 to 3 SF. 3 significance. That is the water uh, here in the salt. Then you are now asked in number F, find the value of X. X represents the number of molecules of water of crystallization. What you do is you equate this substance to the molecular mass, which you calculate in equation number D, which you got as what? 2 what? 86. Then find the molar mass of this salt. It's going to give you 106, 2 by 23. So that's the mass of carbon of sodium that I'm giving to you in the equation. Carbon is 12. Also is 16 times 3. Plus S, water, 2 times 4 for hydrogen, plus 16 for C equal to 286. If you add everything here, we're going to get 106 plus 18S, giving us 286. So 18S gives us. 286 minus 106. 18s gives you 180. S gives you 180 over what? 18. 80. That gives you 10.0 up to 3SF. The value of S will be a whole number. As you may have got 8.6, the answer will become approximately 9. You got 9.2 becomes 9. So you have to prevent S the nearest whole number if your answer is not a whole number. Then the final question says the volume of CO2 gas liberated during the reaction or in the reaction. For this one, we have to work from the stoichiometry of the equation. You have to go back to balance equation. Given to you. Follow CO2 to the in the reaction. In the reaction, you can connect either HCl to CO2 if you want. Or since it did not measure any reagent for you, you can connect HCl to CO2, or you can connect the carbonate to CO2. Now, in the reaction, what was the, if you want to use HCl, what's the average title we use here? 23.60 for this question. You have to find number of moles of acid in the average titer. You want to use the base to solve. You use number of moles. You now use Cb times Vb over 1. So you have the 0 0.1 times 23.6 over 1,000. 
value somebody? 0 0.001. 236 mole. That's the mole of that seed reacting. So we now connect for the balance equation, we connect that seed to the CO2. We now say two moles of HCO gave us one mole of CO2. There's one mole and then two moles there. Then two moles of HCO gave us 22.4 dN cube of CO2. Remember that one more of a gas equivalent to this volume at STP. Therefore, 0.00236 mole of HCO will now give us 0.00236 times 22.4 divided by what? 2. What the final answer, please? 2 what? 64 dn cube at STP. Or, multiply by 1000, we have 26.4 cn cube or CO2 at STP liberated. Remember, this question is different from when they ask you to find the volume of liberated by 1 dn cube. The question is, volume of CO2 liberated by 1 dn cube of, a, of, let's say, of solution A. It be different thing altogether. 1 dn cube. We are now assuming that. One DNQ or that was using the titration. So we're now going to have two moles of HCl equivalent to 22.4 DNQ of CO2, as we have above. The same statement we made here. Therefore, here, since the, the question is focusing on one DNQ of that seed used now, you will not use this number of moles now. You ask yourself, how many moles of that seed is inside one DNQ? That is the molar. Concentration that is CA. Now I said, therefore, 0 0.1 mole of HCl will now give you 0 0.1 times what? 20.4 over, over 2. Is that okay? So if the question says, first the reaction, you can use the average title to find a number of moles or the CBVB, number of the verb of it, to use the, do the calculation. Or the question says, both of by one DAQ solution A. You can use the the number of moles in average time. Right now I use the number of moles in one DNQ, which is the molar concentration. So what do you have here when you solve this? Huh? 1.12 DNQ. Okay. So before we come to the end of this tutorial class, please always try to subscribe. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And then the YouTube channel is YouTube dot com slash at best brand best science brand youtube dot com slash at best science brand so that the youtube subscribe and share the video if you subscribe we having our videos from time to time then for people that require our services we we'll have our phone number here can call for school or private tutorial. So, or you can have 080 local code, or you have the international code over and up here. 080-65-98-56-44. So, that is it. Practice this, and then they say practice means uh, perfect. Then, as we will we'll continue, we're going to zero out alternative B. Practical chemistry and also alternative A and B physics, practical physics. Thank you for this.